Good morning. Please remain standing as we begin our service in prayer and remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance and the National Anthem. Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for each of the graduates. And God, we thank you for, particularly in this day and time, where we still have a Christian university that we can freely even pray and worship your name. I pray, God, for the administration, for all our faculty, our staff, our president. God, give them the wisdom and the strength to continue to lead this university and that it will not deviate from the mandate that we've had to be a beaming light for Christ. God, we pray for all of the graduates. If there was ever a time that we need for graduates, particularly from Liberty University, to those that know you as personal savior, to take a stand, it's today. We pray that you'll give each graduate courage to stand for what's right and what's righteous. Give them the um, strength to do the right things and to be a shining example of what it means to be a follower of Christ. We pray for each of the uh, visitors that we have here today. God, that this may be the first time that they've visited our university. But I pray because of interaction with those of us that know you as personal savior, God, that their prayer may be, let me see Jesus. So we ask your blessing on our speaker, on our entire service, that it will bring honor and glory to your name. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Now the, national, now the Pledge of Allegiance. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Would you all please be seated? Welcome everyone to Liberty's 43rd commencement. This day belongs to the class of 2016. Your, your family, friends, and teachers surround you in this place today to honor you and to say, well done. You are the largest graduating class in Liberty's history. You number over 19,000. This grand number is quite a contrast to the 46 graduates who were awarded a degree in Liberty's first graduating class in 1974. I want to offer a special welcome to the families and friends of our graduates. Without you, many of them who are seated here today would not be here. Our desire for you, our graduates, has remained the same from the beginning. Your teachers and all of us who serve you in this great place of learning have prayed for you. We have sought to the best of our ability to prepare you to emulate Christ and through your service and your chosen professions to impact the cultures of our world. At this moment, those graduates who have gone before you are doing exactly that. There is not a place around the world where their impact is not felt. There are very few nations in our world where we are not found. I am confident that you are prepared to join them. Graduates, your presence in this place today is not an accident. You are here because at several points in your journey, you decided to take the harder path, a path of self-denial. Instead of choosing fun and games, you read, sometimes late into the night. You studied for exams, you exercised opportunities for spiritual growth, and you stayed focused on the goal of finishing well what you started when you entered this university. Because of your perseverance, you are receiving something today that can never be taken away from you. Many of you who are graduating here today uh, have experienced God in new and refreshing ways during your journey at Liberty. In greater and lesser ways, most of you have learned much about prayer and about God's willingness to show up. Many of you have discovered that God wants to be invited into the messy parts of your journey and you aid you with the resolution of some of the great challenges you faced. Some of you are here today because he not only showed up to help you, but he gave you a miracle. The smiles on your faces tell me 
you know what I'm talking about. One verse of Scripture has been embedded in the Liberty DNA from the very beginning. That verse is 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 17. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Liberty's journey has been identical to the journey of many of you who are seated here today. Liberty is dependent upon the Spirit of God for our ongoing existence and empowerment. Our president likes to remind us all that the reason we are committed to careful stewardship and prayerfulness around here is because we've not forgotten what it was like to be poor. At Liberty, we know about God showing up. We have celebrated again and again his timely provision of the resources we needed to continue our journey during the days of our infancy and adolescence. One man on this platform has been here through all of Liberty's ups and downs. In the times when we needed a miracle to make payroll and had only a few scattered buildings on this mountain, one man was laboring tirelessly beside our founder to shepherd us through those dark valleys. One man has been the architect of a campus rivaling the aesthetics and functionality of the most modern universities of our land. One man has seen it all, born it all, and with his wife Becky at his side brought us through it all. Graduates, families, and friends of our graduates and honored guests, please join me in welcoming that man to the podium now, the president of Liberty University, Jerry Falwell. Good morning. It's my privilege to officially welcome all of you to Liberty University's 43rd Annual Commencement Exercises. Today we confer a record 19,430 degrees. To begin, I would like to recognize our guests of honor, the class of 2016. Would all of our graduates please stand? We, we are so proud of you and thank God for each one of you. Do not take this achievement lightly. You have earned this honor. Your years of hard work, sacrifice, and dedication have made this day a reality. On behalf of the university, I commend you for staying the course and seeing this goal to fruition. It has been a genuine, genuine privilege, privilege for me and all the faculty and staff to serve you and to be a part of your lives. Congratulations, graduates. You may be seated. I would also like to formally recognize and thank the family members and friends who have supported you throughout your college career. They stood be... <laughs> They stood behind you, prayed for you, and encouraged you when you needed it the most. They celebrated every step of your journey, applauded you as, you as you passed milestones, jerked your chain when you were out of line, probably wrote a lot of checks to help you out, and are here today to cheer you on as you cross the finish line. Let this be a reminder that no one succeeds in life alone. Would all the parents of our graduates please stand? Many of you, like me, are motivated, inspired, and lovingly supported by our spouses. Since they are our unsung heroes, it is important that we take a moment to recognize them. Would the spouses of all the graduates please stand? The class of 2016 is filled with people who will have a tremendous impact on the world. Last year, Dr. O.S. Hawkins was our keynote speaker at baccalaureate. He presented a stirring message that challenged our graduates to be VIPs by equipping themselves with vision, integrity, and purpose. He later authored a book based on his message to Liberty's graduates 
And today, as you walk across the stage to accept your diploma, you will receive your complimentary copy, a limited, actually a limited edition copy of, the, of Dr. Hawkins' book. So thank you, O.S. Hawkins, for this incredible gift to the class of 2016. Of the 19,430 graduates in the class of 2016, there are 8,464 earning bachelor's degrees, 8,364 earning master's degrees, 549 earning doctoral degrees, including 56 graduates from our School of Law, 5,167 5 members of the class of 2016 are graduating with honors, and, and 1,143 are graduating with a perfect 4.0 GPA. We also have 109 graduates of Liberty Online Academy participating today. Liberty, Liberty Online Academy now has 16,000 students enrolled in K through 12 programs, including my daughter Caroline, who's completing her 10th grade year now in the Online Academy. More and more parents are choosing Liberty Online Academy because of the common core curriculum that is spreading across the country along with transgender restrooms and because many parents simply do not have time to homeschool or cannot afford traditional private schools. Liberty Online Academy is poised to revolutionize traditional elementary and secondary education the same way that Liberty University Online has revolutionized higher education. So congratulations to our Online Academy graduates. The Liberty, Univer Liberty University class of 2016 includes 32 siblings, 25 parents graduating with their children, 11, 11 sets of twins, and 107 married couples celebrating their graduation together. So. <laughs> Attending Liberty University is a tradition in our family. I graduated from Liberty before going on to law school at the University of Virginia. My wife, Becky, my sons, Trey and Wesley, all attended Liberty. My 16-year-old daughter, Caroline, can't wait to attend Liberty. My brother and sister are alumni. Even my mom graduated from Liberty late in life, as many of you are doing today. This year, Becky and I had two nephews and two nieces at Liberty. Last year, my younger son, Wesley, surprised the crowd at commencement by proposing to graduating senior Laura Brumble. Fortunately, she said yes, since so many people were watching, but they were married in October. Trey and Sarah were married the year before that, so all our free time during the last two years has been spent planning for what turned out to be two beautiful weddings. And this spring, all our free time was spent planning for Caroline's Sweet 16 birthday party at our farm two weeks ago. So Becky, would you and the rest of the family please stand? Is that your plus one sitting beside you, Caroline? Uh, uh, <laughs> I need to know about these things ahead of time. But, um, I, I want to welcome Glenn and Rachel Espenshade. They're sitting in the tower to my right. They've been married 53 years. They have four children. 15 grandchildren, two great-grandchildren. Their grandson, Josiah, is graduating today. Their grandson, Jeremiah, graduated in 2012. Grandson, Micah, will be a freshman in the fall. And a fourth grandson, Zachariah, has committed to attending Liberty. Glenn is a successful businessman, worked in the agribusiness, invested in real estate, and all that enabled him, enabled he and Rachel to support Christian education by becoming one of Liberty's top 10 donors. The Espen Shades were also among Liberty's earliest donors in the 1970s, and we appreciate their loyalty and friendship over the decades. Congratulations to Josiah, and thank you to Glenn and Rachel for all you have meant to Liberty University. Thank you.
Linda Trevant and three of her grandchildren are graduating together today. Grandson Michael Trevant is 16, Amia Young Trevant is 15, and Malachi Trevant is the youngest graduate in the class of 2016 at age 14. I, I, usually, I usually recognize our oldest graduate who's in their 90s, but I have strict instructions from that person not to name them or to reveal their age, so I'll honor that. I think they're afraid it might hurt their job search if, if, if people know, if somebody knows their actual age, so, but there is somebody in their 90s. Jose Colon is a single father on active duty in the military, and he is graduating with a Bachelor of Science in Interdisciplinary Studies. Jose made a promise to his four-year-old son, Jorian, that he would never do his homework while his son was away. At times, Jorian even said, Daddy, if you need to do your homework, I understand. You don't have to play with me. But Jose stayed true to his promise, and his son was just as excited as Jose when he turned in his last assignment. Jorian gave his dad a high five and said, Daddy, you did that like a boss. So congratulations, Jose. This morning's ceremony was opened in prayer by Anthony Beckles. He's a member of our Board of Trustees. His son Andre is graduating today. So congrat congratulations to Andre and the whole Beckles clan seated right down here. If you guys want to stand up and wave at us, it's a bunch of them. There they are. But, but a, another member of our Board of Trustees, Don Crane, will close the ceremony in prayer. He has a daughter and a grandson who are graduating today. We're so proud of both of them. And Dr. Harold Wilmington will lead a special prayer of dedication for our graduates. Harold is a legend around here because of his biblical scholarship. He has attended all 43 of our commencement ceremonies, except last year when a brief illness prevented him from closing the ceremony in prayer. And as you have probably seen by now on the stage, Willie Robertson is here. Last time, Last time Willie was on campus, <laughs> last time Willie was on campus, he was filming the season finale for the season, this season of Duck Dynasty. You should have seen him riding down the tubing runs at Snowflex like a pro. But uh, Willie, do you have any words of wisdom for our graduates? Yeah. Good. What's going on? I feel so smart in this robe. When I showed up, I didn't feel real smart, but now when I put this on, I feel super smart to be here with all you really smart people, especially people on this stage. Thank you uh, for the invite. I haven't been to a gradua college graduation since my college graduation, and that actually says more about my family than me. So. Uh, Yes, I'm the only one who graduated from college. Um, that's why I'm the boss of Duck Dynasty. Uh, but I have this great picture. Um, I'm actually really clean cut, a little slimmer than I am now, and uh, I'm holding this little one-year-old boy, my son, who is John Luke, who has now just finished his freshman year at Liberty University. So. Uh, as I look at you guys, I'm proud of you. Um, as, a, as a Liberty dad now, I look forward to my son being out there and uh, graduating. And I guess the only advice uh, really I have for you is just to be, be infectious around people with a positive attitude of Christ. Uh, the Bible says, be the aroma of Christ. And so uh, no matter what happens, uh, affect other people and be the person that people want to be around because when you reflect him and you're a positive person and you help others, people want to be around you. People want to hire you. Uh, some people actually even want to look like you. So if you've got a big monster manly beard, some, some people grow out a little teeny tiny petite well manicured beard like Jerry's. It's like I want to do it but I can't quite commit. <laughs> <laughs> this is the master's degree of beards and hair. Believe me, it's a commitment. You just don't throw this on and off. 
I tell you, you may not, you may not know what you want to do in life. I didn't. When I was graduated college, uh, I thought I was going to be a professional bowler. <laughs> that did not work out. Uh, you never know. It may end up being selling duck calls is what uh, makes you successful. And uh, let the Lord work. Uh, no experience is bad. No job is bad. Just learn from it. Reflect Him. Love you guys. I'm proud of you. Thank you, Jerry, for inviting me. Thank you, Willie. We also have uh, former Congresswoman Michelle Bachman here with her husband, and their daughter Elise is graduating today. And, and I just learned last night that our, our football coach for many years, Sam Ritigliano, who was the coach at, for the Cleveland Browns, his granddaughter Shane is graduating from Liberty. So we, we, uh, we just want to recognize everybody that, that's come to my attention, and, and many more if I if, um, if, if I can remember who they all are, but we are, we are awarding five posthumous degrees represented by the empty chairs in front of me draped in graduation regalia. As I recognize each graduate, I ask that their families please stand. Diane Kropp was a student here at Liberty who passed away in February this year. Both her father and her boyfriend are attending this ceremony. Diana was born in the Philippines and moved to the States 12 years ago. Lindsay Margaret Lett passed away in December of 2015 at the young age of 33. Lindsay's father and mother are joining us today. She was earning her master's in public health after receiving a bachelor's in business in 2013. Hilary Di Tommaso is receiving a master of arts in professional counseling. We are joined by her husband, mother, and one of her three daughters. Danny Thomas had sub substantially completed his master's of business administration. He was the first in his family to obtain a master's degree. He was the father of four sons and one daughter. Family members, few here can imagine the pain that you feel, but take comfort in knowing that your Liberty family is praying for you. We thank God for the legacy of your loved ones and for the lives they touched. Thank you. I'm very proud to say that the class of 2016 includes 5,803 who have served, are serving, or who are married to a service member in our nation's military. <laughs> Liberty is proud to be one of the most military-friendly universities in our nation with over 30,000 military students stationed all over the world. 1,390 of our graduates are now on active duty in the U.S. Armed Forces. Would all of our active duty mili military graduates please stand now? On behalf of Liberty University, I would like to thank you for all you have sacrificed for your country and for all you do to protect our nation. We would not enjoy the freedoms that we do today without the dedication of men and women like you. I am privileged now to recognize a special veteran and two war heroes to Liberty University today. First, my father's twin brother, Gene Falwell, served in the Navy in the 1950s. Gene and his wife Joanne still live in the old home place. There's a picture of it up, how it looked in the 1920s. It still looks about the same now. But uh, that, that property is only about two miles from here, and it abuts the Liberty University campus behind Liberty Mountain. Gene avoids crowds whenever possible. He has one necktie that he wears to weddings and funerals. That's it. But whenever possible, 
I try to get him over to Liberty's campus, and it seems I can only get that done when Willie Robertson is visiting. <laughs> I had him talked into coming over today, Willie, but he was on his tractor Thursday, bush hogging a field, and a tree limb gave him a black eye. So that's at age 83. But he, uh, but my family always enjoys visiting with Gene and Joanne and hearing stories about my grandfather, who was an entrepreneur and businessman who operated a hotel and other businesses on top of Liberty Mountain in the 1920s and 30s, and maybe next time we'll be able to get him over to, to greet the crowd. F next, Tim Lee was our keynote speaker at the baccalaureate service last night. Tim has served on the Board of Trustees of Liberty University since 1991 and regularly speaks in convocation. He lost both legs in combat in Vietnam in 1971 and spent over a year in military hospitals. He dropped from 187 pounds to 80 pounds. The doctors and the nurses did not expect him to live, but God's plan for him was to carry the message of Jesus Christ around the world. Since he was called to preach in 1973, he's traveled millions of miles and shared the gospel with countless numbers of people around the world. We were honored to confer a doctoral, de doctoral degree on Tim last night. Tim actually led the group Veterans for Cruz during Ted Cruz's 2016 presidential campaign. We are honored to have Tim here today, and I'm proud to call him my friend. Tim has been a hero, not only to this nation, but to, but to this university as well. Please give Tim a hand. Mr. George Rogers is here today. He served in the Philippines in World War II. George came to work here in 1974 as our chief financial officer and retired in 1999. He was one of my mentors in the many difficult years that Liberty endured financially in the 80s and 90s. He was known as Mr. No by faculty and staff because he was the frugal financial guy who turned everybody down when they wanted to spend money. But George's prudent financial management was largely responsible for Liberty's survival during tough times. In World War II, George was taken prisoner by the Japanese along with 75,000 American and Filipino troops who were forced to march about 75 miles in five days. It was known as the, the Bataan Death March, and many soldiers did not survive. George then spent three and a half years in a Japanese prisoner of war camp. Starvation caused him to fall off to 85 pounds in spite of his height of six foot three. He was told by doctors after the war that he would never have children, that he would likely never, pa pass age, never live past age 40. He's now 97 years old and remains in good health. He has five children, 14 grandchildren, and 18 great-grandchildren, and recently just returned to Japan to tour his former prison camp. George finally received recognition for his service in 2012 by being awarded the Purple Heart and the Prisoner of War Medal. We are so honored to have George Rogers join us today. Would Mr. Rogers and the Provost please join me at the podium? Oh, we go over here. In recognition of George Rogers' sacrifices for our nation and in, and in acknowledgement of his leadership in the fight to preserve those values upon which this nation was founded, as well as his service to this university, with the power vested in me by the Board of Trustees of Liberty University, the Doctorate of Business is hereby conferred upon George Rogers with all the rights and privileges appertaining thereto. I think I'm up to this, uh, Jerry. Um, I do want to say that uh, 
I'm grateful for you and for this university. And speaking for Dr. Falwell Sr., he would be ecstatic with what he, what I see in front of me. It's a fantastic day, and I'm happy to be a part of it. Thank you. Thank you, God. We have another special guest who flew in from California yesterday. Mr. Randall Wallace was our 2011 commencement speaker and has become a close friend of our family since that time. Randall grew up in Lynchburg and graduated from E.C. Glass High School here. He was the creative force as writer, director, or producer behind some of the best-selling box office hits of our time, including Braveheart, Pearl Harbor, We Were Soldiers, Heaven is for Real, and Secretariat. Since we are honoring war heroes today, I thought it was fitting for Randall to tell you about another major motion picture that is nearing completion called Hacksaw Ridge. Randall Wallace is considered one of the world's best directors and screenwriters and specializes in creating a story that highlights loyalty, love, courage, and honor. Randall is one of the writers of Hacksaw Ridge based on the story of World War II American Army medic and Congressional Medal of Honor recipient Desmond T. Doss, who, like George Rogers, Randall Wallace, and our keynote speaker today, Rashad Jennings, are all from Lynchburg, Virginia. In 1999, our local newspaper, the News in Advance, ranked the awarding of the Congressional Medal of Honor to Desmond Doss as one of the 20 most significant events of the 20th century for this city. The director and producer of Hacksaw Ridge is Mel Gibson. Mel revolutionized the film industry over a decade ago with The Passion of the Christ, a film that forever changed Hollywood. The Passion grossed over $600 million during its theatrical release and was the highest grossing religious film ever. One documentary estimated that within a few weeks of the release of The Passion of the Christ, 70,000 people converted to Christianity. Scores of filmmakers and television moguls followed suit, producing dozens of films and television series based on biblical themes in the last decade. Forbes Philanthropy Magazine named Mel one of the most generous celebrities. It is estimated he has given over $7 million to multiple charities. Our family got to know Mel three years ago when he had us over for dinner at his home in Malibu. Trey and Wesley will never forget sparring with the actual sword from the movie Braveheart that hangs over his fireplace. But Mel told us that night that his goal is to do a sequel to The Passion called The Resurrection of Christ. <laughs> Mel and Randall have worked together over the years on some of my favorite movies, and it is now my privilege and honor to welcome back to Liberty University, Mr. Randall Wallace. Thank you, President Falwell, and I can't tell you what an honor it is to be here with this faculty and these students and you parents and all of you who make Liberty what it is. Jerry's right, I grew up here in Lynchburg. This is my hometown, and I came to believe when I was here, that God had a, a reason for me being alive. I wanted to find that reason. I wanted to follow God, follow Jesus. Uh, and I learned that God's plan is better than my plan. I learned that God is with me even when I feel lost and in my darkest moments. And like Willie said, I'd encourage you to believe that in your life, that even when you are lost, God is not. And that has been a guiding thing for my life in telling stories, to, to find the kind of story that in telling these stories, stories make us who we are. And you can go through your life and tell yourself you're a victim, 
or you can go through your life and tell yourself you're a child of God. Liberty tells stories. Liberty tells the story of the founding fathers and the, the men and the women who created this nation and continue to, the young men and women who keep this nation free. Liberty tells the story of Jesus Christ. It's, it's interesting that Jerry references Mel. Right now, I have some reputation in Hollywood. People know what I did, but when I wrote Braveheart, no one knew what I did. And Mel Gibson had the vision to look at a script from an absolutely unknown writer and say, this thing, Braveheart, might really be something. And Mel has made it his business to tell stories that matter, stories that he believes in. Uh, he also told the story of Jesus Christ. And that created some difficulties. And when he was in the, the darkness of this, I encouraged him to come to Liberty, to come here to people who, who don't worship Hollywood, but who worship God. And you know, it just so happens that today Mel Gibson is here. Ladies and gentlemen, Mel Gibson. Wow, I, I had a shower, washed my hair, you know, I didn't even get a robe. I'm actually, I'm partial to the green color, but there's only one green guy here. I think he got it first anyway. You know, last in, but worst dressed, I guess. And I got the beard memo, right? That's good. Yeah, Jerry and I were growing tandem whiskers, and uh, we tell each other that, uh, you know, the white in there means wisdom. Uh, I came here to see if some of it would rub off, and I thank Jerry for inviting me. I came here 12 years ago, as he said, uh, when Jerry Sr. was here, and he was very kind to me when I was getting a pretty good hiding for that superhero, the ultimate superhero film I made. And, um, you know, so I'm, I'm very thankful uh, for their friendship and acceptance over the years, and uh, I'm happy to be here. Look at all you folks. What is it, 35,000 people? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. So, uh, yeah, and the, one of the other good reasons I came here was to investigate. When I came here the first time to Lynchburg, I didn't know about Desmond Doss, you know. And uh, I've, I've lived with uh, Desmond's story for about almost two years now. And uh, I've gained a tremendous admiration for this man. He was a, a sing, one of the most heroic uh, figures in American history. And um, he was singular, I think. I mean, Medal of Honor winners are all heroes. I mean, they get that, that medal for a, for a reason, but... Uh, and, and it's usually in a moment. They'll do something incredible, extraordinary. But uh, Desmond Doss, uh, he just did it over and over and over again. He kept crawling into enemy fire to rescue his buddies, wounded. And he rescued tremendous amounts of... Uh, of people, and they have families alive today because of him. He lived to be a ripe old age himself. He passed away in 2008, and um, so I decided to, to come here and look at his hometown and, and to drive along the Desmond Doss Freeway. How many people know who he was even? Probably a lot, right? No? Tremendous um, what he did, and he was a man of um, tremendous conviction. He stuck by his convictions. He was a man of tremendous faith. And it was these things that uh, enabled him to have to display this courage over and over again and, and do uh, superhuman things. Superhuman and that he could, uh, he could go out inside himself and depend on something greater than himself to achieve something truly extraordinary and miraculous. So, you know, I'm here to honor him. I'm, I'm here. I'm happy to be here to, to, and I bought my film to show some, some friends. And uh, I'm hoping, and it, as Randy says, you know, stories are important to us all. And uh, when I make stories, I don't make them for an elite. I make them so that other people can witness them and be inspired by them. So um, 
I think it's a, a little lesson for myself first, and then I like to share that with others. But uh, look, I'm real glad to be here, and I'm not real good at talking at these, uh, at these things. I'm kind of awkward and wasn't my thing. I used to be terrified to stand up. Public speaking used to make me fall into a fit. But um, so I brought a friend along, and don't get me, you know, I mean, look, just remember when this next guy comes on, it's not that I'm short, right? It's just that he's incredibly tall. And when you see him, I have, I'm gonna divulge his real identity. He is Superman, right? So, hey, Vince, come up here and give me a hand. Say a few words, Vince Vaughn. <laughs> He's the man of steel. <laughs> nice to be with you here today. I am Superman. Mel does not uh, tell stories out of school. Uh, I'm a great talker, but I'm a fantastic singer, and I thought maybe I could do a Whitney Houston song for you guys. And I want to dance with somebody. Um, I'll spare you that, but uh, I feel like uh, we got a great experience. I want to thank uh, Jerry and, and Becky for making us feel welcome. Uh, their, their kids, they were fantastic. And on this commencement day, I feel like we got an important example of what it's like to go to school here. We found ourselves at Snowflakes last night, and we did not go down the jumps. That seemed intimidating, but we did go down the, the tubing part, which was exciting. Um, and it's a fun moment when you're going fast and then you see the pad and you start to wonder, is that pad going to stop me from going through the pad? And then once it does, you say, well, will it stop two of us or three of us? So uh, that was very fun last night. And we topped it off with a cookout burger, which was exciting as well. But um, I want to say congratulations uh, to all of you and your families on this great day. What a great accomplishment and a uh, great place to, to share this experience with each other and uh, excited for your futures and for all that lies ahead of you. All the best to you. Thank you so much for having us here today. Thank you, guys. We uh, had a great time last night, dinner with uh, Mel and Vince and Randall and Willie and and uh, I have to tell you, talking to Vince afterwards, I already knew Mel was conservative, but Vince could teach government here. I mean, he was, uh, you wouldn't believe, it. he's pro Second Amendment, big time, and he's, he doesn't like the Federal Reserve System, I'm, I'm probably saying more than I should, but he's, He's he's uh, he's on the right side of a lot of a lot of political issues, and we appreciate so much and are honored to have Randall, Mel, and Vince come so far to be with us to honor the class of 2016. Thank you. You guys just want to watch Braveheart now? That might be a good. One. <laughs> Dean Parker is a 19, 9, 1997 graduate of Liberty University and a graduate of Harvard Business School. He's an accomplished corporate executive, technology entrepreneur, company advisor, public speaker, and community activist. He's the chairman and CEO of Vita Capital, an early stage investment firm, and was the national, fi national finance chairman for Dr. Ben Carson's 2016 presidential campaign. Prior to Vita, Dean was founder and CEO of Callus Communications, the leader in unified communications in the Southeast. Callus was acquired by C Spire in 2014, and under, under his leadership, Callus was recognized as the fastest growing company in Alabama by Inc. Magazine. Dean and his wife, Joanne, have four children, Jody, Trey, Lauren, and Zach. The Parker family has generously supported Christian ministries and other charities, including the ministry of our close friend and former campus pastor, 
Clayton King. I'd ask the provost and Dean Parker to join me at the podium. In recognition of Dean Parker's contribution to our nation and to Christian ministries and in acknowledgement of his leadership in the business world, with the power vested in me by the Board of Trustees of Liberty University, the Doctorate of Business is hereby conferred upon Dean Parker with all the rights and privileges appertaining thereunto. Penny Young Nance is a recognized national authority on cultural, children's, and conservative issues. She is the CEO and President of Concerned Women for America, the nation's largest public policy women's organization with more than 50, 500,000 members. It was founded by Beverly LaHaye, a former member of the Liberty University Board of Trustees. Nance, rece Nance received her degree in communications in 1988 from Liberty University and went on to a successful career in marketing, consulting, and public policy. Nance was recently named one of the top four most powerful pro-life female voices by the Christian Post. She has appeared on all major television networks as a commentator on contemporary events and as an expert on domestic issues. Last week, I mentioned on Sean Hannity's radio show that we were honoring Penny today, and Sean stopped me to say that he thought Penny Nance was a rock star in the conservative world. She just released her first book, Feisty and Feminine, a rallying cry for conservative women, and continues to teach the next generation to advocate for truth in the public, in the public square. Penny is married to Will Nance. They have two children, Claire, who's a rising sophomore here at Liberty, and Briscoe, who's a high school sophomore back home. In recognition of Penny Nance's contribution to our nation and, and, and in acknowledgement of her leadership in the fight to preserve those values upon which this nation was founded, with the power vested in me by the Board of Trustees of Liberty University, the Doctorate of Humanities is hereby conferred upon Penny Nance with all the rights and privileges appertaining thereunto. It is now my privilege to introduce today's keynote speaker, Rashad Jennings. Rashad is a native of the Lynchburg, Virginia area, growing up just a few miles from Liberty. After high school, he spent one season at the University of Pittsburgh, at Pittsburgh then returned home to help care for his ailing father, and then transferred to Liberty. At Liberty, Jennings set numerous records and rushed for 1,000 plus yards in each of his three seasons. During that time, Liberty won its first two Big South Conference championships and had a combined conference record of 11 and two. He did all this while double majoring in business and sports management with a minor in biblical studies. Rashad also holds the record for the number of touchdowns scored in this stadium as a running back for the Liberty Flames football team. Jennings was drafted by the Jeff Jacksonville Jaguars in 2009. Since then, his career has taken him from coast to coast. After two years in Florida, he played a season with the Oakland Raiders before landing in New York. During his five seasons, during his five seasons in the NFL, J Jennings has scored 20 touchdowns and logged over 3,000 yards on the ground, including 863 yards as a Giants starter last year. I believe we have a video of some of Rashad's football career highlights. Hey, let's have some fun today, baby. There's a fine difference between living and being alive. Today don't live. Be alive out there today, baby. Hey, let's play this game like it ain't mandatory. Let's play this game like we love it. Let's get this win. Yes, win on baby. three. One, two, three. Five. The Jacksonville Jaguars select. And then he's hit, shakes off a tackle, and he's in for the touchdown. And 
handoff. Jennings he runs right, goes in, standing up, touchdown Giants. Give for Jennings off the left side. He's got a first down and more. Jennings to the 20 for the 15, 10, 5, touchdown Giants. 37 yards for Rashad Jennings. Still will, part of the champion. Throughout his career, Jennings has focused on giving back. His nonprofit organization, the Rashad Jennings Foundation, provides mentoring and promotes literacy, health, and wellness to youth. He visited the Lynchburg area in March to encourage local students to read. In 2015, over 20,000 students from 25 schools across the nation participated in Jennings Reading Challenge, collectively reading over 160,000 books. Recently, I watched on local television news the moving story about how Rashad fulfilled his lifelong dream of building a new home for his mother. It was only seven years ago that alumnus Rashad Jennings celebrated his own graduation from Liberty University. That makes him our youngest commencement speaker ever. In recognition of Rashad Jennings' contribution to those in need and an acknowledgement of his leadership both on the athletic field and through his philanthropic endeavors, with the power vested in me by the Board of Trustees of Liberty University, the Doctorate of Humanities is hereby conferred upon Rashad Jennings with all the rights and privileges appertaining thereunto. Now to deliver our 43rd commencement address, join me in welcoming Mr. Rashad Jennings. All right, all right. How everybody doing? So hearing that I'm the youngest commencement speaker, I got a lot of pressure on me. So first, I'm going to start it off right by thanking President Falwell and First Lady Becky, trustees, faculty and staff, distinguished guests, family, and friends. It is truly a God-given honor to be here today as your 43rd commencement keynote speaker. I'm doubly proud because unlike most of the previous keynote speakers, I can actually say that I've gone full circle. But I also can say that I've lived on a circle too. <laughs> so by a show of hands, how many people have lived on a circle? All right, all right. By a show of hands, how many people have received reprimands while living on the circle? There we go. I'm right there with you. My hand's still up. <laughs> As many of you know, just seven years ago, I sat in the same seats that you sat in. Right before I threw my cap, said farewell to Sparky, and go on to pursue my career in the National Football League. But most importantly, above all else and all others, I want to thank our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, for allowing me this humbling opportunity to speak before my alma mater today. Recently, I had an opportunity to speak at the White House. And while I was there, I gained a new appreciation for how important of a job it is to govern the greatest country on the face of the earth. Also, I would have to say, that I don't think I have enough politically correctness to be a politician. For example, the more delicious the food is, the bigger bites I want to take. I'm just saying. And also, I don't know what Trump and Rubio were talking about, but I have some really large hands. I'm just saying. My handshake might not feel that presidential. In fact, since being invited to the White House, somebody asked me would I rather speak here at Liberty or would I rather run for president? Obviously my answer is simple. This is my home and I'm here today. And obviously the only running I'm anticipating on doing this year is chasing that Lombardi trophy. And I know, I know this is Dallas and Redskins, but hey, all my Giants fans, let me hear you. There we go. I must admit to y'all that it is hard to focus on politics when so many superficial things are being focused on. 
Which is why when it comes to political issues, there's one thing that literally trumps everything and helps everything go back into proper perspective. And that is the fact that the Bible tells us that we can overcome this world by our faith. And since we are in part all here joined by this great university, let's start this thing off right by burning all the political nonsense in these flames. No, y'all didn't see that one coming. Just to let y'all know, I'm liable throughout this speech to just keep y'all on y'all toes by shooting a couple flames. I would like to remind you graduates that you are entering into a different world than I did when I received my degree. The moral landscape of this world is quickly declining. Throughout life, you will be tested to hold your biblical truth. You will be tested to have patience with Christ-like tolerance, and you will be tested to hold your spiritual fortitude and your convictions by the remembrance that it is by and for a holy God that you stand or fall, and He can make you stand. I tell you today, my life has been nothing short of incredible so far. And without a doubt, I know the best is still yet to come. But just not for me, each and every single one of you graduates, the best days are ahead of you. But to experience the best days, you must realize and remind yourself of the vital importance of walking by faith. For if you try to navigate this life by mere human sight, you will miss out on the many ways that God is seeking to lavish grace upon you. Yet, keep in mind that faith does not come without cost. In fact, the first three letters of the word faith are the exact same first three letters of another word that you will not be able to avoid. That word is failure. I will be totally insincere if I did not remind you that somewhere along the lines you will fail. But no, failure sometimes is the cost of faith, because true faith is very risky. A sovereign God may even cause you to fail in some sort of way, but I can assure you that it would not be for the sake of failure alone. Then what is He doing, you may ask yourself? He is preparing you for the next leg of your journey. He is teaching you if you're willing to be taught, and He is carving a custom path only for you to follow by faith. So don't allow yourself to lose heart because failure can do one of two things for you. It can either be the beginning of something good, or it can be the beginning of something better. Faith makes failure the beginning of something better once you remember faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Know that God is pleased to have more in store for you if you trust in Him. I am a living witness of that fact. Christian author, Christian author Robert C. Shannon writes, it has been said that only man comprehends what he cannot see and believes what he cannot comprehend. Much of what we comprehend we cannot see. Atoms, germs, love, hate, loyalty, sacrifice. He who lives by sight lives poorly indeed. Faith is learning to live by insight rather than by sight. Let me reiterate that one part. Faith is learning to live by insight rather than by sight. And there's no better source in all of life than insight to the Word of God. This great university was conceived by founder Dr. Jerry Falwell, and it was built on the foundation of God's Word alone. Jerry was a man of truly dynamic faith. Every one of us today are a fruit of his great faith in God. Yes, even you who are visiting here for the first time today. How so? Well, let's look at it. You would not be here today if this great 
university had not became a reality. You would have had to settle and send your child to the second best school they could find. <laughs> Truly, one man's phenomenal faith in God, trusting in his convictions in the Word, literally moved a mountain and brought everyone here today. And I trust you understand what that can do for your faith. Speaking of Dr. Falwell, I can remember it like it was yesterday. It was the day I decided to transfer to Liberty from Pittsburgh University. As I walked on campus, I had an opportunity to sit in Dr. Falwell's office. And for those of you that didn't get a chance to meet Dr. Falwell, he has a presence about him that just makes you want to shut up and listen. Now, I never forget what he said, and I quote, Rashad, you will help change this university in a major way. You will be the reason why we play and beat Notre Dame and become a nationally known university. Thank you for coming home, and thank you for choosing Liberty. <laughs> that statement he made was filled with such dynamic faith that I instantly believed in and was moved to do all I possibly could to see it come to pass. When I came to Liberty, it isn't what you see today. We didn't have these fine art buildings. We did not have one Big South championship ring. And in fact, our record was one in 10. But that group of men collectively came together and made a declaration that we would do all we humanly could to see Dr. Falwell's vision surpass. And it is that spirit that continues to flow throughout this campus and across these fields today at Liberty University. In the words of the most inspirational movie, Facing the Giants, we are faithfully preparing our fields and continually praying for rain. And look at us today, Liberty. So to the great fighting Irish of Northern Dame, know that it, we will continue to have the utmost respect for you, even after we beat you. And to Dr. Falwell, who is smiling down on us, I can tell you, sir, it won't be long now, because these flames are getting hotter. And today, since we are all here in some way part of Dr. Falwell's big, hairy, audacious goal, I find it perfectly fitting to mention his last book that Dr. Falwell wrote before his passing. It is entitled Building Dynamic Faith. I'm sure many of you have had it as a textbook in one of your classes. And if you have not read it, get it. It is truly worth every penny. That 31-day devotional and chronicle of the faith that it took to build this great university has more to say in it than what is in its pages. So, without further ado, I would like to bring a special guest to stage. His initials are DF, and no, no, it's not Dr. Falwell. Well, not completely. But I want you to join me in a round of applause by joining me, excuse me, by bringing a uh, guest here by a round of applause, and his name is Dr. Dynamic Faith. So, I will move aside and bring my guest, Dr. Dynamic Faith. And as he makes, as he makes his way to the stage, I want y'all to do me a big, huge favor. On the count of three, I want everybody to ask him, where do you exist, dynamic faith? On the count of three, where do you exist, dynamic faith? One, two, three. Well, let's see. For starters, I exist across the globe. I exist in hearts of people. I desire to make them know, in him there is no equal. I exist in people with prosperity, who have it all and would trade it all just to keep their integrity. I am sometimes down in the dumps with those who have failed miserably. Yet I am there to share when they declare that this is not the end of me. 
I am at my best when it is confessed that it cannot be done. Weight, racism, religion, friend or spouse division. I survive and I overcome. I exist in the pain of an athlete's injury. I inspire their refrain. What does all of this downtime make possible for me? What do I stand to gain? I look in millions of children's eyes and I see my first inception. Yet in a world of so many lies, they only can see deception. I exist to make them see God's truth has been revealed. But I need to do this through people just like you, those in the stand and here on this field. In short, I exist in all sorts of ways and all sorts of people, such as Rashad and each and every single one of you. I exist to bring forth the Heavenly Father's business of letting them know who we are and we can overcome the world by walking in faith. But I have found one major problem during my travels. You see, with all that I have done, most of which I haven't even begun to mention today, I have hardly even utilized one ounce of my awesome power, and I yet and anxiously am waiting to unleash it. So, now that you know where I exist, I have a few questions for you graduates today. Guests, feel free to join in. And I'll ask everyone to shout back to me yes or no answers as I ask you these questions. Will you participate? Can I please have a stronger yes? yes? Thank you. Here goes. Will you make it a goal to take and keep me with you during the duration of your life's journey? Yes. Will you invest me in the Lord with all of your heart and rather than leaning on your own understanding, will you acknowledge him in all of your ways? Will you invite me in the conversation when you are asking God for something and will you keep me in mind once he gives it to you? Yes. Will you take me along when you are seeking and will you keep me once you find it? Yes. Will you hold me as you knock on doors and will you bring me in once they open? Yes. And finally, Will you always endeavor to remind yourself that even a mustard seed of me is enough to uproot trees and move mountains like Jerry did? In a nutshell, will you have dynamic faith? Very well then, I am happy to exist in you. You see, I am not asking you to be perfect, but I am asking you to believe in he who is, Trust me, it is your only hope of living the most fulfilling life you can. And let's be realistic, folks. Who doesn't want to live that kind of life? Well, I'm going to turn this thing back over to Rashad now. Thank you, Rashad, and everyone else in the attendance for having me today. But most importantly, forever. Rashad, the mic is yours. But don't hold them too much longer because we cannot wait to get out into the world. Wow. Um, thank you, Dynamic Faith, uh, for, spending old, for spending that precious few moments. I tell you, Dynamic Faith smell like a, sm sounds like a smooth-looking brother. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> it was a pleasure to hear from you, Dynamic Faith. Please, one more time, a round of applause for Faith. Now, most would agree that college commencement speeches aren't exactly the most exciting things to set through. But I trust what Dynamic Faith and I were able to do presents and gives substance to the things hoped for and the evidence of things not yet seen. Nevertheless, commencement speeches are extremely important. And since so many speakers before me 
have focused on things like politics, business, and industry, I figured I'd be just a little bit different and talk about something that all of those topics stand or fall by, which is simple, childlike, Christ-centered faith. After all, playing politics is doing nothing but trying to win a favorable opinion and sway votes. And why would we ever need to politic if we already have favor and the opinion of the one that matters? <laughs> Liberty University's mission statement is clear, to develop Christ-centered men and women with the values knowledge, and skill sets essential to impact the world. It is undeniable that liberty is continually training champions for Christ. My favorite part of our mission statement is where it says, we are changing lives one degree at a time. We all know that a degree is deferred as a title Excuse me, we all know that a degree is defined as a title conferred by a student, college, professional school on their completion. But one thing I would like to focus on, on the word degree, that is very compelling, is where Webster also defines it as the amount, the level, or the extent to which something happens or is present. That piece of paper that you have earned today will play a key in opening up doors, but the degree to which you apply hard work and faith will determine how far you go in life and how much of an impact you will have on the world around you. You must work hard to make life happen, and when you work, you must be completely present if you want the most success. So. Take your degree and make it count for the kingdom. What you are doing today is infinitely bigger than a certificate or a diploma, and there is nothing more than you can start to do like never before with what you have earned than pray. On day nine of Building Dynamic Faith, Dr. Falwell discusses executing your life plan, and here's what he writes. I've discovered that if I plan my life on my knees, everything falls into place. Then he quoted St. Augustine who says, on your knees pray, though it all depends on God. Leave your knees and work, though it all depends on you. And how very true I have found that to be in my personal life and in my professional career. I hope that you will know and experience that truth too. So in parting, I feel it is my duty to add some type of value to your life, but to also leave you with something to mark this memorable occasion. Because to be quite honest with y'all, I don't remember much of what my commencement speaker even said. And after talking with family and friends, they can't even remember who their commencement speaker was. And I came into this thing determined that I would not let that happen. You will not forget me, though you may forget some of the things I said, but I'm trusting you picked up a few nuggets. You won't forget me just simply because I came with all this fire. Don't judge me, we are the flames. <laughs> Finally, I will share with you seven simple thoughts you'll one day be glad you remembered. I've had my graphics guy design a frameable printout that you can place in your home. And as time goes, you can continue to understand how important and valuable these are to you. You can get a copy by going to RashadGenis.com and clicking on the link, Seven Things. They are simple, even to the point of being childlike, yet you may not understand all of them right now, but I can promise you they will be worth remembering. So here goes. One, 
The exceeding abundant power that worketh in you rarely works unless you work too. Two, itches that you create are usually the ones you don't want to be scratching. You can always make integrity your tenactin. Athletes like that one. Three, Peter didn't sink beneath the waves by worrying about tomorrow. He was fearful about his next step, the next moment. Four, when trouble comes, remember, if God is not with you now, then he never was, which means your problem is worse than you originally thought. <laughs> but if he is with you, then it's better than you'll ever think. Five, forgiveness is not for you first. It is for God because he says you have to. Six, expressing love is more of a decision than a feeling. But when it is real, it will be felt in ways that you cannot explain. And seven, laugh at the right things a lot, sing joyful songs a whole lot, and develop a happy dance and always find ways to do it. We are the salt of the earth. We are sent by Christ to give the flavor of God's righteousness to this world by living a particular way and sharing the gospel of Christ that makes sinners thirsty for the water of life that only Jesus can give. And you know what else is significant about salt? It doesn't burn in fire. In fact, Jesus even mentioned salt and fire in the same context when he said, everyone will be salted with fire and every sacrifice will be salted with salt. Just know, in that context, he was speaking of hell's torment for those who refuse to believe. Therefore, they will be preserved in pain forever. But unlike them, we are those who have been salted by God to withstand the day of his fiery wrath. And if we will not burn in God's wrath, then how much more should we withstand the burning temptation of a fallen world? We are the salt of the world. I felt, I felt, I felt President, I felt President Falwell jump over here. I'm kind of scared. I thought, I thought he was going to choke me on that one. <laughs> so remember, <laughs> so remember, there is no need to overcomplicate this thing called life. It is complicated enough. The power of simplicity is one of the life's most precious resources. Jesus led the most simplest life, and yet he continues to impact the world like no other person that has walked this earth. Was it simply because he was God? Absolutely not. Because he even told us that we would do greater works than him. God delights by taking the ordinary person and doing the most extraordinary things. Will you be one of those people? Here's one thing I know for sure. I'm not supposed to be here. By any stretch of the imagination, from being a little short kid, Overweight, 0.6 GPA, high school, 275-pound, fifth-string running back with asthma. But one thing I know for sure is when God has your back, you can dream crazy big. So with that being said, I would like to conclude by saying congratulations to the graduating class of 2016. Go set this world on fire. Shout out.
I'm gonna see. I'm gonna see if he got see if he got some skills over here. All right, we'll take it. So all right, this is autograph football. By your 43rd commencement speaker. I better not see it on eBay. Hey, we got any marketing majors? So I'm about, I'm about to do I'm about to do one of the best marketing things I've ever done. I want everybody to go follow me on Instagram. I'm at Rashad Jennings. Hey. <laughs> Left side, right side, which side? <laughs> the last thing before I leave, I always do this. In a huddle, when I was here on this field, we would always break it down on the count of three. How I want to break it down real quick is I'm going to get everybody to scream flames, ah, on three. Y'all working with me? Now you got to be loud. We got to be loud on this one. All right. On the count of three, flames, ah! One, two, three. You know, there are many prayers in the Bible, and I thought, wouldn't it be wonderful if we could invite several who prayed these prayers some years ago to be here today? today. So, my, strict, my imagination, consider this. I want you to bow your head and close your eyes, and I want to read some of these prayers that were prayed thousands of years ago, but each now praying for you. Here's a prayer of Aaron, Israel's first high priest, to you. The Lord bless and keep you. The Lord face, uh, calls His face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord let up His countenance upon you and give you peace. Here's the prayer of the Apostle Paul for you. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Always in every prayer of mine, making a request for you with all joy, being confident of this very thing, that he who hath begun a good work in you will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. Here's the prayer of Simon Peter for you. But the end of all things is at hand. Therefore, be serious and watchful in your prayers. And above all things, have fervent love one for another, for love will cover a multitude of sins. One of my favorite prayers is one of the last in the Bible, prayed by Jude, the half-brother of Jesus. But you, beloved, graduate, building yourself up on the most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit to keep yourself in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. Now listen to these words. Now unto him who is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to God our Savior, who alone is wise, be glory and majesty and dominion and power both now and forever. Amen. Thank you, Harold. It's my privilege to present the degree candidates for the class of 2016. But before I do that, I want to disagree with Willie Robertson on one minor point. I think he has a PhD beard, not a master's beard. And I think Mel Gibson has a master's degree beard. And so we confer upon you the PhD of, Bur of uh, Beards, and Mal, you get a master's degree. All right. Now I want to recognize the various candidates for degrees. The candidates for the Doctor of Philosophy, Doctor of Education, Juris Doctorate, Doctor of Ministry, Doctor of Worship Studies, please stand to be recognized. All right. You may be seated. Candidates for the Education Specialist, Master of Theology degrees, please stand to be recognized. All right, please be seated. Candidates for all other master's level degrees, please stand to be recognized. All right. You may be seated. 
Candidates for all bachelor's level degrees, please stand to be recognized. <laughs> Candidates for all associate of arts degrees, please stand to be recognized. All right, please be seated. Candidates for the Graduate of Theology, the Bible Diploma, and Bible Significant Certificate, please stand to be recognized. You may be seated. Liberty Online Academy graduates for high school diplomas, please stand to be recognized. Congratulations to all of you. And now, will all the members of the graduating class of 2016 please stand and remain standing for the conferral of degrees. Okay. This, we're about done. So a little bit, a bit, a little bit of patience, please. But on this commencement day, you stand in a new relationship to Liberty University, a university that now looks upon you as its sons and daughters. This institution has succeeded. If, if you have learned here the ability to think critically, utilizing not only man's store of knowledge and wisdom, but God's wisdom in making life's decisions. Today, you will experience a new freedom, but with that freedom comes new responsibilities. We trust your education at Liberty University has prepared you to enjoy that liberty to its fullest and to accept those responsibilities without fear. You have a high and noble calling, and you have a finely tuned guidance system, the Holy Spirit of God. Never again on this earth will we be assembled together as we are today. As you leave, you will go into all walks of life, to all corners of the world, carrying with you the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Throughout the years, we will hear reports about you, but only, only eternity will, will reveal the full impact of your lives and your education at Liberty, had, that, that, that that education has had upon the world and the world to come. It is our prayer as you leave this campus that you will have a full life based upon faith in and dependence upon Almighty God, personal integrity, and respect for your fellow man. We hope that however far your journeys may take you, they will bring you back to this campus to which you will always belong. Remember, you are our ambassadors wherever you go. Your associates will judge Christian higher education by how you conduct yourselves. As you graduate, you should not find satisfaction with the commonplace in character, attitude, or values. By your example, you should raise the intellectual and moral tone of society. In presenting you now to receive your degrees, we charge you to live a life of devotion to the Lord Jesus Christ and dependence upon the Holy Spirit for strength, direction, and growth. In testimony of your conduct and purpose, by the power vested in me by the Board of Trustees of Liberty University and upon the recommendations of the faculties of the university, I hereby confer upon you the degree of the university with all the rights and privileges appertaining thereto. You may now move your tassels. All right, graduates, I'd like for you to remain standing for the class pledge. We now have the opportunity with a united voice to say something together as a class. The Bible says better is the end of a matter than the beginning. On behalf of the administration, faculty, and staff of Liberty University, I want again to commend each of you who graduate today for finishing what you began a number of years ago. We join your family and friends in applauding your hard work and commitment to achieving the goal you are celebrating today. And now, graduates, please join me in reading of the Pledge of the Graduating Class. The pledge is located on your program on the inside of the back cover. So if you have, don't have it in your hand, get it in your hand. Open to the back cover. And I want to lead you in reading together with me that pledge. Are we ready? We're ready. As a member of the graduating class, and in the presence of these assembled witnesses in God, I express my gratitude to Liberty University. 
and promise to hold my degree so no loss will come to it. I pledge to earnestly and faithfully seek to perpetuate this opportunity for other generations of young people, that our Lord's work may never lack for leaders of character and ability. With whatever wisdom I possess and with reverence for the truth, I pledge the best of my life and loyalty to my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and I commit myself to the service of my country and my alma mater. I affirm my determination to honor, through my life and deeds, my inheritance from the past, and to do all that I can to advance the cause of Jesus Christ. Now, ladies and gentlemen, would you bow your heads with me in prayer? Dr. Crane is going to come and lead us in prayer. Would you all please stand, please? The Bible says the steps of a good man or woman are ordered by the Lord. Remember, graduates, who's guiding you. Let's pray. Our Father, we thank you for this wonderful day that you have prepared for us to enjoy this great occasion. We thank you for your divine presence and, Lord, for your guidance in every step that these graduates will make. We thank you for those who have sacrificed, those who have gone through this together with their children, their grandchildren, and, Lord, most of all, with you. Thank you that we can celebrate today because of your amazing grace. We praise you, we honor you, and we thank you. For it's in Christ Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.